Now that we've seen how to position a view, let's see what kind of views we can add into our apps. UIKit, the GUI framework for iOS, includes a full set of common controls that you can use to create your application's UI. Here's a list of the most popular controls we use, with comparisons to Android and Windows. These are all just classes which ultimately derive from UI view, so we'll position and size them just like any other view. The ones we'll be using in this course are highlighted here. These are probably the most commonly used controls in every app. We have UI button, which displays an interactive button to activate a feature, UI label, which is a piece of read-only text, and UI text field, which is an edit control which can enter data from the on-screen or hardware keyboard. Our goal will be to create the UI for the tip calculator application. We'll need three controls for this application, all created and positioned in the view did load method. We'll use a UI text field to hold the total price we want to calculate the tip for, a UI button to let the user execute the tip calculation, and a UI label to display the tip amount. Let's start with the entry field for our total amount. First, we must create a UI text field control and set the frame property to be a rectangle to place the edit field. We can customize the look and behavior by setting properties. Keyboard type to control the keyboard that is shown when you tap on this edit field. Border style sets the rounded rectangle around the edit field. And placeholder to display some light gray text when there is no value. You want to use UI text field to add edit controls to a screen because it automatically displays an on-screen keyboard when the control is tapped. Next, we want to add a button to the UI using the built-in UI button class. The constructor takes the button type you'd like to create, of which there are several available to match system styles. The default button is called Standard, and it displays a button with the system color text and a transparent background. To see the background, create a new custom button and set the background color property to a UI color value. Finally, we need to set the text for the button. This is done by calling the setTitle method. You can set the title independently for the different states of the button, or by setting the normal state, we set all of the other states as well by default. You'll want to use UI button to add buttons to a screen. The standard button type only displays a title with no border or background color. The last control we need is the label to display our tip results. We'll use the UI label control for this. You can supply the frame as a constructor parameter. This is true of most of the controls and it's identical to setting the frame property separately. Next, we set the text, text alignment, and text color properties to control what the text looks like. Once we've created all of our subviews, we need to add them into our screen by adding them to the root views children collection. We have two approaches shown here. First, you can add a single child to the collection using Add Subview. You can add a group using Add Subviews. The order that you add the controls is relevant in the rendering process. iOS renders controls in the order that they are in the Superviews collection. So the first control you add to the Superview will be the first rendered on the screen. It won't matter for our tip calculator, but if you have overlapping views, you should take this into account to ensure you see the parts of the subviews you need to see. If you want to examine the subviews for a view, it's quite easy to do. Xamarin iOS makes the UI view class iEnumerable, which means you can use for each to iterate through the children and examine each one. Here, we are walking through all the children views and removing each one. There's no remove method on the parent. Instead, you remove the child using the child itself and the parent is notified through a set of virtual methods that the child is being removed. A couple of points about this code. UI view is I enumerable, not I enumerable of T. You can't use link methods directly on it without casting. That's also why we have to cast the type in the for each. This is required or the value will be object. One last thing to take note of is that the implementation supports modification of the collection while you are traversing it.